SDS page, what is it, how does it work, and why is it useful? SDS page stands for sodium, dodecyl, sulfate, polyacrylamide, gel, electrophoresis, and is one of the most widely used types of protein electrophoresis out there. Protein electrophoresis is a standard laboratory technique during which charged protein molecules are transported through a solvent by an electrical field. Both proteins as well as nucleic acids may be separated by electrophoresis. Biological molecules tend to carry a net charge at any pH other than their isoelectric point, meaning that they will migrate towards the positive charge of an electric field. I have a video explaining the isoelectric point in greater detail as it relates to amino acids, which you can check out, I'll link it at the end of the video. The mobility of a molecule through such an electric field will depend on the field strength of this electric field, the net charge on the molecule, as well as the molecule's size and shape, in addition to the ionic strength and the properties of the matrix. Polyacrylamide has smaller pores, making it ideal for separating the majority of proteins in addition to smaller nucleic acids. SDS page separates proteins primarily by mass because the ionic detergent SDS denatures and binds to proteins in order to make them uniformly negatively charged. This is essential since there is only one more factor affecting protein movement, namely the mass. Therefore, when a current is applied, all SDS-bound proteins in the sample move through the gel towards the positively charged electrode. Smaller proteins, or in other words, proteins with less mass, move quicker compared to those with greater mass, due to how the matrix is constructed. For our purposes, you can think about it as several fishing nets lined up after each other that still give some leeway when fish swim through them. You can then imagine in this scenario that really small fishes have no problem and can just move relatively unrestricted through these nets, not really slowing them down at all, while bigger fish will get slowed down much more by these fishing nets because they get stuck a bit and then they get out but then they get stuck again and so on and so forth. So that's an easy way to think of it to remember how this sort of works. It works in a similar manner, not exactly like that, but similar enough. So then, when the sample have been separated by electrophoresis, i.e. when we have applied an electric field over the gel for a specific amount of time, we can compare the various stains with standardized ladders to determine the relative size of our samples. The separated samples can also be transferred for further separation using, for example, isoelectric focusing, and or they can be extracted for further analysis by mass spectrometry. This isoelectric focusing is also something that I have previously covered, so I will also link that video by the end of this one. For these reasons, gel electrophoresis is essential in many kinds of proteomic analysis. To assess molecular masses, i.e. the sizes of proteins in the gel, a prepared mixture containing several proteins of known molecular masses is run alongside the test sample in one or more lanes of the gel. These sets are called molecular weight markers, or more commonly, at least in my somewhat limited experience, protein ladders. One can construct a standard curve from the distances traveled by each of these markers, and from this standard curve one can extrapolate the molecular weights of our samples. So there you have it. Let me know if you found that helpful in the comments. Also, if you want to check out my videos on isoelectric focusing, as well as isoelectric uh, points, you can do so by clicking the respective video on the screen right now, here and here. Do it! With that, until next time, and thank you so much for watching.